Rishi Sunak is being warned this morning that he faces voter revolt and a red wall backlash over his dismissal of Lee Anderson. That's according to leaked WhatsApp messages from MPs that have been seen by the Daily Telegraph. Yeah, he's a former uh, deputy chair of the party, that's, that's right, Lee yeah. Anderson, and yeah. he's now lost the Conservative whip altogether he, because he refused to apologise after saying that London Mayor Sadiq Khan was controlled by Islamists. He made those comments during a television interview and it has prompted accusations of Islamophobia. Sadiq Khan responded by saying Anderson's comments sent the message that Muslims were fair game when it came to racism. Mm, so is Islamophobia taken less seriously somehow here in the UK than other types of prejudice? Joining us to discuss this is uh, Mick Dard Versi of the Muslim Council of Britain and political commentator Suzanne Evans. Mick Dard, let's start with you. Do you think that Islamophobia is somehow culturally more acceptable in Britain than is, say, anti-Semitism? We are less likely to call it out. I don't like these comparisons too yeah. much, but I do think the Islamophobia is normalised in many sections of our society. People don't seem to recognise it when it's right in front of them. I mean, even the Conservative Party yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, the Deputy uh, Prime Minister, Oliver Dowden, he was unwilling to say that what Lee Anderson had said was Islamophobic. And said was, us, he said it was wrong. He said, he said it was, it was wrong, wrong, but he said it and wasn't racist. Correct. But not Islamophobic. He said it wasn't racist, Do you it wasn't think Islamophobic. It is Islamophobic. Or he wasn't able to say it was, sorry? Do you think it was Islamophobic? I think that it's quite clear it was Islamophobic. Can we just listen to Lee Anderson? Because for those viewers who will be wondering what the words were, I think it's only fair that, that we let them listen to them. Here we go. He said, and I'm, I'm, if you don't like the comparison, I'm sorry, but if he'd said, um, as we were discussing earlier, the Jews have control of the London mayor, the Jews have control of London, it would be called out immediately as anti-Semitism, wouldn't it? I think it would the be. The old trope. I think these, these are clear anti-Semitic tropes. That would be a clear anti-Semitic trope. This is a clear Islamophobic trope. There's this idea that Muslims are taking over the country. It's a white supremacist and far-right trope that has been used by many in that sort of... Okay. Those, those extremist circles. But think... Suzanne... Hmm. You take issue with that. You think this is not Islamophobic. I think there's a problem about what is Islamophobia. Mm. And I think the problem is, I would say Islamophobia is, is criticism of Muslims and mm. being uh, talking about Muslims in a very derogatory way. Like Muslims now, taking over the country? Exactly, had he okay. said that. But, of course, that's not what Lee Anderson said. He was really talking about Islamism, which I'd hope is something that we could both condemn. You know, the idea of Islamist terror. Um, and... There are many people who will agree with what Lee has said because we have seen in recent weeks, we've seen London basically hijacked by protests. Um, I have Jewish friends who actually say they can't go into central London now on a Saturday. Well, that's got nothing to do we with the have... London mayor, has it? Well, and, it has because, of course, London... he's in charge of policing and he's been very clear that he's not going to do anything to stop these protests. Other countries have. France and Germany have stopped similar protests. They're saying they're anti-Semitic, they're very oppressive to Jewish people. So you've almost got a clash of culture here and I think Lee Anderson was trying to highlight that now what he said I think was extremely clumsy I don't think he put it very well but the fact he hasn't apologized is is obviously what's okay. caused him to lose the whip and Mick got Dad, him into enormous trouble the protests mm. causing concern mm. what do you make of mm. that accusation look I'm, I'm sure people have different views on on protests I think generally we can say that protests should be allowed in a democratic society mm -hmm. but there are people who have done some clearly illegal and anti-Semitic activities, mm. those people should be punished. Now, mm. what does that mean about the overall protest? Does that mean that the overall protests are somehow linked to Islamism? Firstly, it's worth noting the vast majority of the, of the uh, protesters aren't even Muslim, right? Now, so the idea that this is somehow an Islamist takeover just doesn't have any uh, mm. weight to it. And, and I think that what we're seeing here is sometimes a bit of a distraction. The, what, what has been said here, if, when you hear, if someone were to say, Zionists have taken over England, mm -hmm. we, we'd have the same view. Mm. We'd say that it's the same as saying Jewish, even though they're actually using the word Zionist, which is a different term, but it's a, it's a racist cover. Similarly, if someone says, Islamists have taken over the country, this is a, that's a cover for what they're actually saying. Susan, we're talking about Muslims in actual Suzanne, can I ask you this question? We, again, we were discussing this earlier on, on the programme. What do you make of the fact that the Conservative Party, and sort of by definition, therefore, the government, they have a definition for anti-Semitism, mm. a clear definition, mm. um, but they don't have one for Islamophobia? I think it would be good if we did have a clear definition of it, actually, because it's interesting you talked about a distraction. In many ways, I think what this all, whole fuss about Lee Anderson is a little bit of a distraction from the Islamist threat that we do have in this country. You know, Islamophobia is on the rise 
because people are frightened. People are frightened by the fact that nearly 100 people have been killed by Muslim terrorists in this country in the last two decades. So if and I want to say the same thing about anti-Semitism. If anti-Semitism is on the rise because Israel's being attacked, uh, Israel's, for example, no, you're attacking... You see, why, why you're, is that pro I'm trying to understand that why you think that it's OK in one case and not OK I'm in not the other. I'm not saying it's OK in the other. I think it is very, very often the case that Jewish people will jump on the bandwagon and cry anti-Semitism when there has been legitimate criticism of Israel, for mm -hmm. example. I think, by the same token, if you don't mind me saying so, I think Muslims will cry Islamophobia when there is rightful criticism of Islam and Islam so Islamist okay terrorism. To, so it's OK to say... And Islamists both are as bad as each other. So you think Islam is taking over the country or Islam is taking over London is not a trope that's a problem, even though it's the, the term, the idea that's used by white supremacists and far-right yeah. for, for a decade. I'm, you don't I'm not, think that's a problem? I'm not, not going to stand by and, and argue that exactly, but the thing is, so, I think... But I just want to understand the, that one point, though, because that's what, yeah. that's what Suella Braveman said in, in The Telegraph. She that's did. what That's what Lee yeah. Anderson said... Yeah. Uh, in a different way about London mm. afterwards. So I'm trying to understand, like, th this is a really clear white supremacist trope. Suzanne, it's so clearly I, I don't think you, if you just, apart from anything else, it's just factually wrong. It's factually but it wrong. Plays yes, into it plays a prejudice and exaggerates it. Yes, but my and point... And that's what makes my it point Islamophobic. Is, my point is, the focus is always on the Islamophobia and not what is actually fueling it. And the fact that, as a country, we have failed to get to grips with the problem of Islamist terror. Let me just give you some examples. But, that's, but, but, no, but let me just saying give you, that let me is give you OK. Some examples. You know, no, the, no, the no, Rochdale, saying it in a reasonable and measured way... Which I'm trying to do. ..we need to get to grips with the Islamist Rochdale terror. The Rochdale totally grooming gang. For I, years, I have no problem they, with they've that. taken control of London and got control we have, we, we, of Khan. Look, I think we're all agreed around this table. And give that away was a the city to his mates. We're all agreed around this table. That was a ridiculous thing to say. But what I'm and talking so about, well. what I'm talking about, is the focus on this is mm. taking away the focus from the real problems that we have in this. Yes, country. you said that. But the roots clearly go quite deep. I mean, I, I'm personally, I'm intrigued by the, by the fact this morning that we now know that there are many constituents in the so-called Red Wall uh, constituents. Mm in the north, mm. who agree with what this man said. Mm. And they're contacting their MPs to say, no, don't sack him, don't take the whip away, he's right. Now, they don't live in London, they don't have any experience mm. of London, most of them. What makes them so quick to agree with this, do, do we think? I, I think it's because, as I'm saying, we have seen instances, very clear incidents, when actually um, Muslims seem, by their reckoning, to have the upper hand. I mentioned the Rochdale grooming gangs. For years, that went unreported. The police were uh, attacking the girls who were being raped as opposed to the majority mm -hmm. Pakistani Muslim men who were involved in this. And it was reported as an Asian grooming gang uh, because people were too frightened to mention the M-word, if I can say. The same with female genital mutilation. That's been illegal for over 30 years in this country, but there have only been two prosecutions. Does she have a point? Despite the fact uh, that the NHS has sure, seen 12,000 really cases sure a year. I'm not really sure uh, FGM is a Muslim issue. It's never been a Muslim issue. Not it's not exclusively, majority. but no, it's mostly not, it's, it's in not, this country. It, well, uh, I mean, not really, because many of them have come from Christian parts of Africa, and, and that they mm -hmm. also have... I said it's not thing. exclusive, but yeah, the majority I mean, so are that's in this the point. Country, majority, that's what we're seeing. Like, you, you talk about what is causing it. Like, of course FGM is disgusting and unacceptable, mm -hmm. and no Muslim in this country, in, in, in any position of authority, in any position of, authority, uh, of power, would ever say that it's OK. So why, then, so is, the, is the community so no, reluctant not, to though. report people? It's not. Not though, it, right? They the, clearly are, the, I'm afraid. Then that's not, I mean, that's not what most people are talking about. If you look at all the experts, that's not what they say. So I think the, the real question that we need to come to is why do some people in, in some of these constituencies think that this is OK? Yeah. And I think the reason is because there isn't that understanding of Islamophobia. And unfortunately, our leadership in our country is not standing up to Islamophobia in a very clear what way. What would you like to hear Rishi Sunak say right now? about it's this. That Islamophobia is totally unacceptable. It's happened in this case. It's happened in other cases in the party with Soela Braverman. We've seen with this Hope Not Hate investigation and uh, what on would support you, Marshall. what would the, you like to see as a definition of Islamophobia? The same definition that many Muslim, hundreds of Muslim organisations have signed up to, that the APPG on British Muslims has, has put out there, that has been basically adopted by every which political is, party, which party, which says Islamophobia is a type of racism that targets expressions of Muslimness or your Muslim identity or 
perceived Muslimness. And but with that, the same that, thing, she's just talking that, about Muslims. And what if Lee Anderson could... does what he's being urged to do and apologises for the remarks, and it's been heavily hinted that if he does, he'll have the whip restored to him? Do you think that would be a reasonable outcome if he I, says sorry? I personally think that broadly, I think that apologies are good and we should always encourage them. I think, though, what we have to recognise is the potential double standards. When Azhar Ali talked about his ridiculous comments earlier, what rightly happened with him was that he was told that even though he had a really grovelling apology, he wasn't allowed back into the Labour Party a week or, or two weeks ago. The same thing should probably happen here. If we, let's just make sure there's equality and, and fair treatment of all. But okay. generally, I'm very, very for but apologies. But as a political commentator, if he does say sorry, he probably mm. won't, but if he does, do you think he will be allowed back in? Absolutely. I, I think he should be. And, I, and, and, you know, politicians don't like to remove the whip for people. They want people to be as many people as possible in their party for voting power. But just go back to the definition of Islamophobia. What I don't want to see is any definition of anything like that that prevents uh, rigorous criticism of religion. I don't personally think any religion should be immune... And I agree with that entirely. OK. And the well, problem is, I think, is that some people oh, think okay. Islamophobia is criticism of the religion, per se, which is okay. wrong. OK. okay. That's that's really interesting. Thank, Thank you very much, much thank indeed. Very good.